Coming up, state education officials are investigating last week's homecoming activities at Hazard High School. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. We have new information tonight regarding the viral homecoming man pageant at Hazard High School last week. The Lexington Herald Leader reports tonight that state education officials are investigating a complaint about the homecoming activities. The KDE confirmed to us they had received a complaint of educator misconduct, but could not disclose anything as the investigation is still in its preliminary stages. The viral photos last week included simulated lap dances for staff from boys, girls in Hooters t-shirts pretending to carry beer, and students being paddled. Now, Hazard Independent Superintendent Sandra Combs also told the newspaper that, quote, the district cannot comment on the matter while it is under investigation at the state level. Officials will not say which educator is being investigated. Hazard Principal and Mayor Happy Mobellini still has not commented on the incident. Starting today, Kentuckians can sign up for health coverage through a virtual marketplace called Connect. WIMT Zach Hawk takes us through the system, which is actually making a return. Connect is not an entirely new system. It was established under former Governor Steve Bashir as part of the Affordable Care Act in 2013, but was removed three years later. Connect is a one-stop shop to make it easy for all Kentuckians to get whatever benefits they need, including health insurance, child care assistance, food assistance. Um, you know, and primarily what's happening right now is the health care side of things. But navigating a virtual system can be challenging for some, so the program is offering connectors, people who answer questions, fill out forms, and provide help any way they can. You know, I've got some folks that don't have an email address and don't want one, and so they don't want to go create an online profile and fill stuff out. They just want to talk to me over the phone to do it, and I'm happy to do that. Governor Bashir estimates 280,000 Kentuckians lack health coverage, so connectors are available in every county to help people sign up. And these connectors can be found by searching the website, or sometimes that information is shared in public places, like libraries, locally. However you find them, the work is personal. So to be able to tell that family, it's okay, you know, you're, you're going to be covered, he's covered, he can go to the hospital today, and they'll be able to look him up and find it, um, there is no better feeling, really. The enrollment period runs from November 1st to January 15th. If you would like coverage at the beginning of 2022, you will need to enroll before December 15th. In Hazard, Zach Hawk, WYMT, Mountain News. In addition to coverage plans, the Connect website has information about child care, elder care, food benefits, help with utilities, transportation, job training, and veterans benefits. Some Kentucky voters will head to the polls tomorrow. Three General Assembly seats are up for grabs in special elections. One is in our area, in the 89th District, after Representative Robert Goforth resigned. Democrat May Suramik, a small business owner in Berea, faces Republican Timmy Truitt, the principal of McKee Elementary. That district includes all of Jackson, northern parts of Laurel, and southern parts of Madison counties. There is also a very closely watched governor's race in neighboring Virginia. The Pike County Health Department is working to shine a light on diabetes as National Diabetes Month kicks off today. Public Health Director Tammy Riley says the department is pushing for people to become more informed and prepared to face concerns about diabetes. She says the different types of diabetes can be addressed in many ways, but believes that the increase in type 2 diabetes, even for young people, has shown a lack of access. It's a very large county and finding your way to, even within your own community, uh, within the county, you know, getting access to that local park or trail or facility, sometimes in and of itself is the challenge. So those are some of the key factors that we're looking at. Riley says she hopes to see funding for accessible programs in the future but adds that the health department can already refer people to certain programs free of charge to inform and get people on the right track. Plenty of sunshine this Monday afternoon. The good news, though, 
is that, well, I guess it's the bad news, I guess, because we are reintroducing showers to the forecast as we head into tonight. We did have a nice sunset, though, out there. I hope you were able to get out and enjoy that. University of Virginia camera wise showing the sunset we had out there earlier as those high clouds moved in from the west gave us some spectacular colors in the western sky earlier on tonight. I-75 at Mount Vernon, things moving smoothly right now. The late evening traffic continuing to move up the interstate. Many of us got up to near 60 today within a degree or two as a matter of fact. Why is our usual cool spot? Only made it to 54, but many of us 59, 60 or 61 for daytime highs. A lot of us though cooling off quick now. Jackson's at 48, Prestonsburg 45. Hazard a cooler reading right now at 43. Pinpoint Doppler, a lot of this is ground clutter not reaching the ground, but some of that is some shower activity moving in from the west. So showers on the increase later tonight. Those lows getting down into the low to middle 40s in many spots. And we're going to have a look at those showers working in and when they finally work on out coming up in just a bit. Steve. All right, Evan, thank you. A man died Monday afternoon in a coal mining accident in Logan County, West Virginia. Brian D. Wallen suffered fatal injuries at the Mingo Logan Coal Company's number two mine in Sharples. A release from the governor's office said Wallen was an assistant chief electrician with 25 years of mining experience. Companies tied to West Virginia Governor Jim Justice will resume coal production at several surface mines in eastern Kentucky. The Lexington Herald reports tonight that Jay Justice, president of Justice Companies and the son of Governor Justice, said the company has begun work to start producing coal at the Bevins Branch and Beach Creek Mines in Pike County, the Bull Creek Mine in Knott County, and the Infinity Mine in Harlan County. State regulators have argued that Justice missed deadlines to finish reclamation at two of those mines. Justice says that when all four mines are up and running, they will employ 120 people in mining jobs and 30 more in support positions. Following the untimely death of a local priest, a Bell County church community is looking back on his legacy. Father Kieran Veraparla was just 39 years old when he died suddenly Sunday after serving as priest at St. Julian Catholic Church since 2019. The cause of death has not been determined, but those who knew him say they are smiling as they reflect on all the memories he brought them. He was just the most humble person, uh, meek person, you know, and, and definitely meek not in the way of a weak person, but he was, he was just so humble and he cared so much about the community. And one thing he started here was a soup kitchen. He wanted to try to help anybody that he could. Funeral arrangements have not yet been announced. It is unknown whether the service will take place in Middlesbrough or in Veraparla's home of India. On tonight's Issues and Answers, I sat down with Kentucky River District Public Health Director Scott Lockard. We talked about COVID cases and vaccinations. Lockard says almost anyone in Eastern Kentucky qualifies for a booster shot. I also asked him if he thought fall festivals were super spreader events. He says they have not seen any evidence of that. Delta was a particularly nasty variant. If we had had Delta before we had vaccination, uh -huh. I, I, I just uh, would have really been concerned. Our, our mortality rate would have been so much higher throughout this district. Lockard says if you get a booster shot and originally got Pfizer, then sh you should probably stick with Pfizer for your booster, and the same goes for Moderna. But any questions should be directed to your health care provider. It's that time again this year where officials with Invest 606 have announced their finalists. It is giving 13 local businesses in Kentucky the chance to win up to $30,000 in cash prizes. The goal is to help network businesses across the Commonwealth and fund any future endeavors the business may have. One of the finalists, Appalachian Horse Project, is just thankful for the opportunity. No matter who gets those top three prizes, it's going to be good for the region anyway. I mean, even if we don't, um, just making the finalists actually gives you a whole range of benefits. We have statements from the other finalists and their thoughts on being involved with the competition. You can read those on our website. The ongoing global supply chain issues are continuing to cause trouble for many local businesses. Like many restaurants, staff at Big Blue Smokehouse in Perry County are still working to bounce back from COVID-19. Now on top of moving and staff shortages, increase in price costs and limited availability of goods are a concern. 
Manager James Peterson says despite what's going on, he and his staff are trying to make the best of a difficult time. It's made us uh, use three different vendors to find the product for the guests, um, and we shop to get the best prices so we don't have to raise our prices here Yeah, to make sure we're getting the best quality food for them. Peterson says while he is a new employee at Big Blue, he's happy to be part of the team. When the temperature drops, it's important to keep your pets in mind. According to Dr. Danica Harvey at Appalachian Animal Hospital in Hazard, any sick, young, or older animals should be brought indoors during colder weather. As for larger, healthy animals, although they have better chances of withstanding the cold, it's still important to ensure they have adequate shelter. Simply put, if, if you're cold, they're cold. Um, so when the temperatures start dropping and it starts getting colder out, you know, animals, they're going to need fresh water, fresh food. They're going to need adequate bedding, adequate shelter, uh, so that they can stay warm from the elements. Kentucky River Regional Animal Shelter staff say if your animal must stay outside, it's important to make sure they have a covered shelter space. Straw or wood chips make great insulation for these spaces and also works to re retain moisture. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, business owners say they're getting confusing letters asking for money to file forms that they thought were from the government, where the mailers really came from and the fine print behind them. We'll see skies clear a bit later this week, bringing much colder weather in for the overnights. I'll have those details on the way.